uh, business there uh, that is a, a ice plant, I believe, an ice manufacturing plant, something along those lines. This is the same tunnel that the, uh, the Mexican authorities discovered um, uh, or reported last week. Well, they are still good at it. Jay Ahern's a former commissioner of U.S. Borders, uh, Customs, and Border Protection. He's principal of the Chertoff Group. And Jay, welcome back here, and good morning to you. Good to see you, Bill. Uh, one began under a bathroom sink inside of a warehouse in Tijuana. And there are so many other creative ways. H how good are we at detecting these, Jay? Well, I think one of the things we need to look at is it's detecting tunnels becomes much more of a challenge than some of the things we can clearly see above the ground. But I think one of the things that give us a higher probability of success is there's only two or three key locations along the border where tunnels actually can be configured, and that's in the San Diego area and over in Arizona. When you go further to the east, Rio Grande River over in Texas, you also have some of the mountainous regions and in, in extreme desert. See, so those don't, aren't conducive for it, but they're clearly much more difficult to detect, but I think it really takes intelligence investigations and interdiction working together to really hone in those resources. Uh, well, at one tunnel, apparently, someone suggested you would need engineering expertise in order to construct this. This is high-scale stuff. Yeah, it, it sure is, Bill. I, I had the opportunity to see one for the first time in the 90s and went down into several of them over the years. And one of the ones I saw that was one of the most magnificent pieces of engineering clearly did need to have that high-skill capability uh, to make sure it was stable. What do you mean it was magnificent in its engineering? What did it look like? Well, it's not just a dug hole in the ground. I mean, it reinforced. We've actually seen, and I know that's the case in one of the circumstances here today, conveyors and rails to be able to push the loads across the border underneath the ground. Uh, takes more than just uh, manual laborers to go ahead and do this. I bet. Uh, you know, it also, uh, I guess depending on what you have deployed above ground, that would seem to dictate how, how far or how effective you are driving the drug cartels uh, to this right. point. Now, now, does that suggest we've gotten better on the surface? Well, it, it certainly does. When you take a look at things that have been done over the last few years, you know, often said doubling the size of the Border Patrol, building 650 miles of fence, you know, adding the technology along the border. Let's speak about San Diego. San Diego actually is one of the most secure locations on the border with Mexico above the ground. There's double fence, Constantino wire across the top, tactical roads for the Border Patrol to be able to patrol you know, very visibly, and stadium lighting. So what we're seeing is in that exact area, the tunneling that's occurring below, as well as now moving out into the ocean, some of the small boats making the places, uh, making to places north of the border, like La Jolla and up in San, Cle San Clemente. Well, so we're seeing a displacement. A, yeah, with a submarine at one point, too. Uh, there's an estimated cost of one of these tunnels at $1.5 million. It shows 